Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Rex Stranahan. Yeah. I like the Stranahan. I know. Uh, so they did a different bottle here? Yeah, well, it's a, this is their cask single barrel release. Yeah. Right, so this is usually it's just a round bottle, know, and it's got a it's got a side. flat bit. So that's what falls over and starts to roll. It doesn't go off the bar. That's a good idea. <laughs> it just rolls till it hits the flat side and then goes chunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I just I made like, that up. No, but it feels special though. It does feel special. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Single. So this is just a single this barrel. This is a single barrel. Drink. Now yep. this is from Todd Limbacher. Todd Limbacher, you may give us a Funny, I saw the nom Tom Limbacher, and I was like, that guy is an industry professional. I don't know what industry. Yeah. It's like, I'm Todd Limbacher. Right. I'm an industry professional. I looked at it, and sure enough, he's a realtor. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Some kind of professional. He's got his, his own letterhead. Yeah. So this is for Rare Whiskey Friday. It's not Rare Whiskey Friday. It's a normal one, because Stranahan's is actually, these days, pretty available. So you can get Stranahan's, yeah. but not necessarily. Not necessarily this barrel, but their single barrel program gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You know we're going to compare. We can't compare it to the real Stranahan's. We can compare it to the Diamond Peak. Because it turns out, Zach and I searched the tower. <laughs> See, you don't want to just do this. now. You don't swing it around. Yeah. You lose the power. You gotta pop right in there. Yeah, straight. Yeah. Yeah. And then you torque. Wow. You pull back with the other. Right. right. And you just don't get me started on my teabagging technique. <laughs> Perfect. It's dialed in. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, anyway, this is 114 proof instead of the 94 that they normally bottle okay. at. But we uh, have even our backup strand of hands is empty right now. Yeah. So we're gonna compare it to the Diamond Peak. Right on. Um, the Diamond Peak you can get absolutely all over the place. Feels like I'm missing my paraphernalia. This is a Denver, Colorado distorio, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Ooh. This one is. Hold on a second. That smells really, really good. Hold on a second. Let's go. Let's get a little something. something, something. By the way, this is barrel 16-0547. Okay. This is fruity, crazy pear and apple fruity mixed with this dark honey note. I'm right now, I think I had coffee too recently. Mm. Are these just pouring? Yeah, yeah, no one's put their mouth on it, but if you do that, we'll run out of water to pour into whiskeys. All right, there you go. I can pour water For into mine. For the next three episodes. <laughs> pour water into mine. All right. <laughs> there we go, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's like, uh, so beyond like the sweeter, sweeter notes you were saying, mm -hmm. there's like this, um, almost an antique wood. Like a dusty, yeah. yeah. But that fruitiness is the dominant note, sure. I've always liked Stranahan's. Yeah. I've always thought it's a really solid American malt. Mm -hmm. Like just. Ooh, oh. I'm getting, wow, the sweet, sugary, sugary, this malty density. vanilla. Like a sugary, malty vanilla. It is very vanilla. Yeah. Wow, uh, wow, wow. So there's something else there that caught me off guard, though. That I, well, normally 115 is not hot for us, but this right now is just kind of it, oil cleaning yeah, its way down. And I was, I was saying, like, also the mouthfeel. It's like an oily Ugh. whiskey. It feels very oily. Tastes very oily. It's dense. But the the oiliness is carrying with it more of a like a desserty, sugary sweetness. That usually when, we get, when you're getting into oiler whiskeys, you're gonna at least me. I, I pick up some more, you know, natural flavors like tea leaves and certain kinds of fruits. Mm -hmm. This is like sugar, sugar and wood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dense. And it's the it's the on the taste you're getting that vanilla impact. I added a little water to this to bring it down because that burn is still lingering. So we're not running out of water. Mm. Huh. Well, my own one. Staff single barrel number twenty two. So this was a staff pick. Oh, mm. oh, the, yeah, densely, densely sweet. That's the name of the game there. Add a little water to yours. Okay. A little? Just the, just the least amount you can. Well, that's like a single drop. Well, a couple of drops is fine, but like not a big pour. I did four drops. You ruined it. So we're gonna compare it to, how is this different? Different mash bill, what's going on here? Hey, look, this is Diamond Peak, this is the same thing, but this is just hand-selected oh. by the distiller oh. instead of by other humans, right? <laughs> Wait, um, so the distiller and the not distiller. Right. And then not the flat bottle. Right. Okay. But this is also, uh, this is 94, yeah. but this is a batch 22. You know what the water And this was staff pick 22. The water woke hey. up the wood and a citrus zest. Mm. 
citrus zest. Yes, that's why I was saying to try it because it not, got not just sweet and woody, yes. but also sort of citrusy. Yeah. And I like that. Mm -hmm. Actually, like really, oh, what are the little um? I prefer what are the little, little oranges. The um, yeah, little mandarins. Well, those are kind of little oranges. Yeah, yeah. but the ones you get in bags in the grocery store. Cuties with like a hundred. <laughs> it's not a hundred, but it feels cutie. like forever. It's that kind of really sweet orange, not tart orange. Right. But let's compare it to the Diamond Peak, which is specially selected batches from the older barrels, but proofed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the same. This is sweeter on the nose. This has got the more malt musty. So when the new one you pulled out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's way more malt and musty. Yeah, a little more subdued on that. Barrel sugar. and earth. A little more subdued sugar. Th that tastes more like sort of an earthy space side. Whereas this one is just this dense sugar bomb with yeah. citrus zest. Yeah, but you can see how they're definitely coming out of the same distillery. Right. We got Benjamin Delacio. Here's a question for both Rex and Daniel. Which would you prefer, a Texas summer or a Washington winter? I've never experienced a Washington winter. I've experienced many a Texas summer. Yeah. So I'm going to say Washington winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So here's the thing. There are people in Texas, because the summers are sort of the great separator mm -hmm. from those who should stay here and those who are like, I don't think I can do it. Right. Uh, I mean, when you have over 100 days in a row of over 100 degrees and over 80% humidity. That, that was... That's some serious we, we action. Don't, we, don't, we don't talk yeah. about that. Even the hardcore Texans were looking that at was exceptional. Like Colorado real estate and things like that. But a lot of people who are like, you know, they, they're very proud of their landscaping and their lawn. You get halfway through this window of time that happened, and they're like, whatever. It's just, That's a, I give up. Yeah, apparently my yard's going to be brown forever and very yeah. dirt. <laughs> Uh, dead animals that couldn't make it across. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was bad, man. But here's the thing. There are people who look forward to the Don't mind having to endure the heat. Mm -hmm. And I am with them until we hit that. Uh, just a long... Yeah. Uh, like if we have, you know, a dozen days of over 100 or 20 or so and it's scattered in with 90s, like, I like Texas summers. Right. I like the heat. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I also really like cloudy... For long periods of time, I like cold weather. Mm -hmm. I think I might want to try I the like, Washington. I like today's weather actually. It's super today is nice, rainy but not cold. Yeah, it's not actually raining. It's mm -mm. threatening to rain, but you still get like that nice little brisk, a little mm -hmm. bit of a breeze, overcast. So you're mm -hmm. not having to do a lot of squinting, but it's still nice, plenty of light, friendly lighting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so far, I keep coming back to this one, the new, the one you just pulled out. They said it was the distiller select. Yeah. Yeah. This has got more character. This is densely, it, beautifully sweet. And it feels a little bit more balanced. Too. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah, really, there's for people that love like their sweet whiskeys. Mm -hmm. That's gonna really get you there. But this is That's got be, more complexity. A little bit more of a balancing act on that. Yeah. Shane Jeffcoat, how do you like your eggs in the garbage? <laughs> I, uh, I put that in there because Rex hates eggs with uh, the passion of a thousand fires. Yeah. No, they're, I, I, uh, they're disgusting. They smell like farts. <laughs> like, and you were going on and on about like mouth feel, right? Oh, like the, the jiggly, yeah. you know, little, little, little cooked up embryos. Like, what? <laughs> How can you eat this? I don't know. Like, it's a weird outlier that I have no explanation for. I hate weird textures, but eggs are somehow okay with me. When I was, before I could speak, when I was an infant. Yeah. Right? My, <laughs> apparently, my parents, they tell me stories of, we'll be in a restaurant, we'll be at home, and trying to feed you eggs, and we'd put some in your mouth, and you always spit them out. Mm -hmm. But you were hungry, you want food, you put some more in your mouth and you spit them out. I believe I have such a deep-seated hatred of eggs that my eldest child, yeah. he has a very serious egg allergy. That's true. I think my my distaste is genetically ingrained into my offspring. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, people are like, well, don't you like things made with eggs? Like, you know, cakes and muffins or whatever, just baked goods. It's like, oh, it's fine. Yeah. And, and I can get so far... This is as close as I can get. I can get so far as um, like a breakfast taco where they accidentally had little scraps of eggs in there as long as, I'm saying scraps, scraps of eggs, right? Has to be mostly potato and, and cheese and bacon okay. and whatever. As long as it's swimming in salsa. Oh, and so you can't even tell. Can't even tell. Because it tastes like a part of the salsa. Can't even tell. Yeah. What about fried rice that has bits of eggs? That's, you know, again, 
little scraps of eggs, mm -hmm. right? And by the time you get all the other stuff, a little bit of soy sauce, scraps of eggs, and you can't tell. Mm -hmm. All the other textures. Just close your eyes with every fork bite. Right, right. But like the scrambled eggs, and then my kid had poached eggs at a restaurant, and mm. my wife makes them in the morning, and it's like, God, it's... Oh. <laughs> I, on the other hand, like them scrambled. <laughs> oh God, just, they're the worst. I actually really enjoy regularly making egg sandwiches. <laughs> it's just bread, mayo, and right. egg. Like, I like all other foods. I'm very open-minded. Yeah. Uh, the most exotic, weird, crazy, funky things. I'm all in. Eggs is out. <laughs> Disgusting. Yeah. Disgusting. This is not disgusting. Both of these really nice. A uh, little bit too sweet for me on the was the People's Choice. What yeah, was this yeah. one? Me too. And then uh, the distillers. I like the balance there. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. Steal me, you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.